Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Joanne O'Brien from TM Forum, and we're here to give you a preview of some of the technology that we'll be sharing at the Open Hack in Vancouver next week. So it's a great pleasure to get an opportunity to um, take you through some of this technology, help you get started with your preparations, and we're available to answer any questions. There's a chat box on the right hand side of your screen. You can uh, pop questions in there and we'll, we'll endeavor to cover those over the course of the webinar. The webinar will also be made available on demand. Uh, there's a link with the uh, technologies where you can access the, the details of the technologies from the Open Hack website. And these slides and the recording of the webinar will be shared on on that uh, confluence space so thanks everybody for joining us this morning with me here this morning is uh ying yang, ying zhang from uh, the cto office in telus he's the manager of the wireless activations he's going to take us to the telus apis and technology we also have asish who is the chief engineer with sierra wireless he's going to tell us about the mango oh red which is a brand new open source hardware platform and we have Pierre Gauthier, who is the Chief API Architect at TM Forum and a colleague of, of my own. Um, so just a brief introduction to TM Forum and who we are, and that, that's really just to explain to you why this hackathon is a little bit different to other hackathons that you may have been involved with before. Uh, we are a not-for-profit industry association, okay? So there's, there's over 900 member companies who collaborate together with TM Forum and we build a lot of industry common technology that's needed for for all of industries and in the context of you know interconnectivity across ecosystems and getting all everything and the uh, in the universe to actually connect together and talk together there's a need an essential need for a common set of uh, apis that enable that that interconnectivity and the forum has been working with our members for a number of years now and building out this whole suite of apis and they're the purpose of the APIs really is to enable agility, enable interoperability, communications with partners across ecosystems, and things of that nature. And all of the companies that you see here on this slide have all been leaders in this idea, have been advocating the program since its uh, conception, and are now deploying the APIs across their, their systems. But the APIs themselves are service agnostic and technology agnostic and can be used for any type of application. Hence the, the value of hosting them as part of a hackathon and working with you guys to, to see how we can solve particular challenges for, for the city of Vancouver. The program was formally launched publicly um, about 18 months ago at, uh, at an event we called TM Forum Live. And since then uh, it's grown pretty significantly, it's grown hugely really. Um, there's over 600 companies using the APIs, 4,000 professionals, there's a community of over 23,000 professionals, and you're more than welcome to join that community, talk to people about using the APIs, they're freely available um, from our website, which you'll get the, the all of the access information that you need to get going with using the APIs uh, during the webinar and at the hack next week. So that's just a little bit of background to, you know, what's, a little, what's different about this hackathon. Um, previously, if you've attended other hackathons, you'll probably have seen tech companies exposing their APIs as complete separate set of technologies and in some sense often even competing with each other. It's very much a collaborative hackathon where we're showing how these assets can be used together to enable um, new and innovative solutions to be uh, created rapidly, rapidly using plug and play and um, you know interoperability of, of, of technologies across across different sources. Um, we'll be leveraging the City of Vancouver da Open Data Portal, uh, Telus APIs, obviously the TM Forum Open APIs, and the uh, Sierra Wireless technology. So it really will be about how we use these things together to solve particular challenges. And we've been working with the city of Vancouver to, to really understand, well, what are the types of challenges that are uh, ever present in, in the city of Vancouver? And we learned a lot about, you know, the extent of uh, forest fires this year um, and in other years, which I think particularly this year. Um, and last year at our hackathon, the winning application was a, 
a group called Firebot, and they created an app which basically helped reduce the response time for emergency services to identify the exact location of a forest fire and to address that, you know, in a more rapid way and therefore reduce spreading of forest fires. So in talking to the city of Vancouver, again, the um, the topic of, of uh, forest fires came up and, as well as obviously the topic of air pollution and air quality as a result of forest fires. So um, you know, these were things that were seen as a particular challenge for, for people living in Vancouver. Our, our ambition really is to see how we can make this technology available and to help improve the lives of the citizens of the people living in the city of Vancouver. So it, it's quite a broad challenge, but also you know, relevant to, to your, own, your own environment and your own, your own city. Um, so general smart city applications are all, are all deemed relevant, uh, how to make a, the citizen's life better. The forest fire, as we mentioned, and reduction in uh, response time for emergency services, air pollution and monitoring and reporting, particular issue across many cities in the world today, which regard particularly for people with, um, you know, respiratory issues and things of that nature. And the city of Vancouver has some very good data portal on, particularly on air pollution monitoring and things like that, which, which we also. Uh, make available on our on our technical confluence space. Other challenges that the the city mentioned were things like smart housing and accommodations. Um, so we thought of well worth including that in our in our series of challenges. That uh, um, let's see how how we could use the the technology to improve the capability to address some of the housing and accommodation issues, as well as transportation and navigation. So these are the top issues and challenges that the city of Vancouver decided to set for us. Um, so now we're going to get into the actual technology itself. And first up is uh, Ying from TELUS, and he's going to tell, tell us about, <laughs> pardon the pun, uh, the, the APIs and technology from, from TELUS. Thank you for okay. the introduction, Joanne. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, Joanne, and, and uh, welcome, everybody. Um, at TELUS, we're, we're very proud to be um, part of this year's uh, hackathon. And uh, in addition to, to the connectivity that we provide for, for anywhere wireless access uh, within Canada, we're, we're also providing um, a set of services that, that allow you, uh, the participants, to interact with our, our mobile devices. So we've uh, identified three sets of uh, RESTful APIs that we're exposing through the uh, IBM Bluemix platform that we think you'll be able to quickly use and adapt into the applications and and uh, you know items that uh, you create for for the open hack um, so the first it's to retrieve location of a mobile device the second is to uh, send and deliver um, an sms uh, message and the third is to get the status of uh, a sms message that you had sent previously okay next slide Okay, um, so in accessing all the uh, APIs before we get into the details of um, each one, uh, we've done a pre-registration so that all the OpenHack participants um, will have access to call them uh, without doing a, a complex onboarding procedure. Um, so just keeping in mind uh, before invoking any of these APIs, you need to add uh, a special header um, in the HTTP request for all your API calls and um, this uh, this ID it's uh, again set up for the purposes of the open hack and everybody can share it. Um, the information will again be made available on the days of the open hack. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind and make sure you include uh, this header for your calls. Okay, next slide, John. Okay, so the first API that we're providing it's um, to retrieve location or, or you know specifically the last loan location of a device by its phone number. Um, so with Android and iOS, there are capabilities on the device to push out uh, or, or to retrieve its current address. Um, the difference with this one is it's uh, application triggered, so it's not from the device. It's uh, it's it's either server based. Um, or from wherever your central uh, services servers are located, and uh, through a um, setup, you're able to then uh, locate a set of whitelisted uh, devices and retrieve the latitude, longitude, and 
altitude, uh, as well as the last uh, timestamp of when that location was made available. So this is uh, a pretty easy rest uh, for call. Um, there is a URL that's provided uh, and you just pass in the phone number that you're looking for. For the purposes of the hackathon, we're going to provide you a set of numbers with, loan, with known locations uh, so that you have some deterministic output in the call. And again, the response, it's, it's a very simple JSON object that uh, you'll be able to rapidly use within your application. Next slide, John. Okay, the second service that we're providing is to deliver an SMS message to a phone number. And again, um, as long as the uh, header is put in, your, your application will be properly authenticated. Um, and this will be a post call to our REST service uh, to deliver the message. And it, it's very simple. You pass in two parameters, the uh, destination address and the message body. And on successful delivery, uh, you're provided a correlator ID that uh, you can then use to track the status of that message that uh, you sent. Okay, last slide. Okay, the um, corresponding and final service that we're providing as part of this uh, hackathon, it's to retrieve the delivery status of an SMS message. So this, again, it's a simple GET request, and the parameter you provide is the correlator from the message that you delivered. And a successful response will be the number that you delivered it to, as well as the delivery status. Okay, so again, we're, we're providing a sampling of the RESTful APIs that uh, we've got. Um, if you're uh, interested in more details, and, and particularly on the day that you're participating, we have a full set of API instructions uh, at the TM Forum OpenHack wiki page. So we look forward to your participation and uh, look forward to the great services that you provide. And I will hand off to Ashish, who will talk about the Mango platform. Thanks, James. Good morning, everyone. Firstly, thanks for attending this webinar today. Uh, from our side, from Sierra Valley's side, we will be presenting to you and giving an offer for you guys to play with the Mango Red platform. Uh, before I go into the details of that platform, let me tell you about the webinar itself, what I'm going to talk about. First, I'm going to talk about quickly about what the Mango platform is. Then I'm going to go through a few use cases um, that might give you ideas as to what to do during the hackathon itself and then talk about what we're exposing to you um, during the hackathon itself. So Mango itself is a highly flexible and expandable open source uh, hardware platform which has been purpose built for cellular connectivity. In a sense, it's a business to business open hardware platform uh, that bridges the gap between the makers and the industrial products. Um, there are two core elements of Mango. The first one is a series of open hardware designs that you can modify and use to build your commercial products. And you can use these designs for prototyping or you can use it to build your own platforms. The second core element are a series of like IoT expansion cards that you can use to add different combinations of technology in a plug and play format. These cards are, a lot of these makers and industrial uh, companies, they use it not only for prototyping, but also in actual industrial IoT products. Next slide, please. So one of the things about the platform itself is it's completely open source. Um, we um, sell it under the Creative Commons license attribution style. Um, this is the most accommodating of licenses in the sense that um, you can use this platform, tweak it, re rebuild it, and then you own the end um, platform that's built. The only thing that we ask for is more like an attribution. So if you go to mango.io, you will see all the schematics and gerbers um, for the platform are there. And you can use that uh, to get a bit of an understanding of what the platform is. And if you go to our GitHub page, so it's github.com slash mango, uh, you'll see a lot of the sample codes and applications we have built um, with this platform. If you go to the next page. So on the Mango Red platform, which we will be providing to you uh, for the Monday and Tuesday hackathon, um, we will have our, a smart module, which is a WP module that we provide that includes a modem and an application processor where you will be running um, the applications on. Um, we have a bunch of sensors and we have already uh, provided sample code that we will load into the Mango Red 
Um, and this uh, data from these sensors is then being pushed to the cloud. So these sensors include an accelerometer, a gyroscope, a light sensor, a temperature sensor, and a pressure sensor. Um, you can also do an audio call if you if you want to do that. Uh, this could run on a battery powered application. Uh, we also have a Raspberry Pi 26 pin Raspberry Pi uh, compliant connector that's on board. And we will bring a couple of IoT expansion cards like Ethernet um, or Wi-Fi that you can use uh, to build applications. Next slide, please. Um, just a couple, just I'll go through three applications. Although we have been, our platform itself has been used for many uh, of our proof of concepts and prototyping by external companies. So the first one is an Australian company that used the Mango um, as a prototyping platform for a smart agriculture uh, uh, platform where they took a mango board, uh, mango green, because that was what was available last year, and they connected to a bunch of Zigbee sensors, and they did local uh, processing, so more like an edge computing platform where they could do some processing at the edge and then push the rest of the data to the cloud. Uh, so this is one application, so if you go to the next one, So this was a weather station uh, that was built with the Mango platform itself. So in this case, the person was gathering a bunch of sensor data, um, again, doing edge processing on, those, on that data, uh, gathering the weather information for a local region, and then also then correlating it back to what was being um, sent, I guess, from the weather stations itself, and then making intelligent decisions, uh, both at the edge and at the cloud. Next application. So this is a, a smart home application that was built uh, by a company in South Africa. Uh, and in, in this case, what they did was they used the Mango uh, to do secure communication uh, where a person could, would be told to enter PIN codes or to NFC-based systems, get access to a premise. Again, they were able to do this uh, with some of the code that was already, already provided on the Mango Green and they build their code on top of it, and then they were able to uh, push their platform as a commercial product. Next slide. So that at the hackathon itself, what we will provide you is uh, a mango red. We'll provide around five to seven mango reds. Uh, all of them will be pre-programmed with a sensor, so we'll have all the drivers, everything written for you. Uh, we'll have um, the application is written itself, so if you go to the TM Forum webpage, you can get access to that uh, application on our GitHub site. We then are able to push this data to our cloud service, which is AirVantage, and we're also showing you how you can take this data and then connect it to IBM Bluemix. We will also show a working application uh, where this data is connected to an Amazon Web Services, um, and you can do a more like an audio uh, you can actually ask um, the Mango Red platform so, so for what's the temperature or what's the pressure or what's the humidity um, and location. So you can get that data points as well. If there's interest in that, we'll bring it. If there's no interest in the Amazon part of it, we may not bring it because it seems like um, uh, the other, uh, everyone else might be using IBM Bluemix. Next one, please. This is a bit more of the embedded architecture itself. So we provide the drivers. Uh, we have an open source uh, software framework known as Legato. So you can read up on it at legato.io, where we have a bunch of APIs that we use to gather the sensor data. And then using Lightfoot M2M, we push it to our AirVantage cloud. And then using RESTful APIs, we're able to connect to the IBM Bluemix uh, server itself. Um, so this is the embedded application. What we would like to see definitely is people using the Mango and then using it to connect to um, other APIs and um, doing some embedded uh, applications on the Mango side itself using the Legato framework. Uh, so that's about it from my side. And best of luck for the hackathon on Monday. And I'll pass it over to Pierre now. Hello, hello. Uh... So uh, let's talk about KM Forum Open APIs. Uh, we'll um, we'll run a, a number of TM Forum Open APIs in our cloud sandbox. Uh, some of them are trouble ticket, usage, product ordering, billing, 
product inventory, service level, agreement management, customer management API, party management API, privacy API, uh, uh, product catalog APIs. This is uh, this is a sample of uh, the application or the APIs that will be uh, uh, running uh, live on our cloud sandbox. As developer, you'll be able to, for example, create a trouble ticket retrieve the trouble ticket associated with a specific customer, for example, that you would have uh, created using our customer API. You could use party to model individual and add profiles to the party, things of that nature. Next slide. So the, if you look at the, uh, the scope and purpose of those APIs, they're really uh, uh, meaningful in an environment where you would do, for example, end-to-end -end management of, a, of an IoT product, uh, uh, for example, or any product for that matter, where you would onboard the product into within the, the product catalog using our onboarding and product catalog API. You could then order that product, uh, look at the usage of that product, and then build uh, your customer. This is just a sample of what you can do from a, a product management perspective uh, uh, with our APIs. Next slide. Uh, you'll find all our open APIs in our open uh, APIs portal. Uh, each of the API uh, have, an, have a specification, a Postman collection, and a Swagger. Uh, you can use the Swagger UI, UI to connect live to the, the uh, API is running uh, in our sandbox, and you can uh, uh, download the specification. So very important, you can use the Postman collection and the Swagger uh, to connect directly to our cloud uh, uh, sandbox and uh, exercise uh, the API from there. It's an example of the Postman uh, connecting uh, uh, to our sandbox where we uh, are creating a, a product order. So the product order will be persistent in the cloud sandbox so you can reuse it moving forward. Uh, next slide. Uh, same uh, uh, apply to our Swagger. Uh, all our Swagger, our JSON schema version four base. Uh, you can use them uh, for uh, learning the APIs, but you can also Use the uh, the Swagger to actually create and uh, your your client uh, uh, or and server code uh, uh, application. Next slide. So in essence, uh, when we look at the Akaton ecosystem, we have the TM Forum APIs, the Telus API, the Sierra Wireless IoT APIs, and the Vancouver Open Data APIs. Think about developing application that make good use of all those APIs. Uh, good use of, uh, of, of the combination of, uh, of, let's say, the open data APIs, uh, geolocation data APIs from Vancouver, the IoT uh, uh, real-time uh, uh, data APIs from Sierra, combine that with the uh, uh, TELUS uh, uh, location and SMS API, and maybe, and not maybe, but please mash up with uh, some of the TM and forum APIs. Um, you have a very, very good uh, uh, number of uh, APIs to, to, to work with, and you should be able to develop uh, extremely interesting application going from, let's say, uh, an individual with uh, his, his profile, the impact of, uh, of real time uh, uh, temperature uh, or air pollution uh, data on his air combined with uh, the location of uh, his phone. Or think about uh, holistically about uh, what the application will bring to uh, uh, smart city citizen. Uh, next slide, thank you. Thanks, uh, John. Well, thanks, Pierre, uh, Asish, and uh, Ying for, for taking us through some of the technology. Um, 
So really, that's the summary of the technology that you get exposed to next week. And that really just allows you to get going with your prep, um, starting to look at the technology and how you might put it together uh, to create uh, new innovative solutions. I mean, the, this technology, just to, so you're aware, like the APIs of, of the forum are being deployed across the globe. They're already deployed in 27 different countries. Um, not just in the telco space, but also in smart city solutions particularly. Um, they're being used to build smart city platforms. And during the session next week and the detailed session on Monday, uh, Pierre will, will cover how the APIs can be used a, in a smart city architecture um, to enable interconnectivity across different cities around the world. So this kind of hope gives you a flavor of how the suite of technology that's available at this hackathon can really be used to create not just solutions for, for your own city and to help uh, challenges but can also ultimately be used to create scalable applications that allow you to um, reuse and, and, and scale out to different markets very quickly. Uh, this is a key fundamental of the, the Open API initiative um, to get that reuse and get that interconnectivity around the globe. So I hope you look forward to I look forward to meeting you all next week. Um, we're happy to take some questions now if you wish. Otherwise, the the materials will be made available online directly from the Open Hack website, and you'll get an email today as well with with those details. Um, uh, we have a question yeah. from one attendee on the webinar. Um, okay. Ross McKinnon has a question. He wants to know if Tel Telus currently supports two way SMS capacity. So uh, if one of you guys could answer that, that'd be great. Sure, uh, I'll take that question. This is Yang. Um, just to repeat, uh, was the question, how does TELUS support two-way SMS? Uh, let me does it. close. It says, does it? He was just wondering, does it currently support it in a two-way? Um, uh, yeah, so TELUS does our, our full suite of, uh, through our full suite of uh, APIs. Um, applications and application developers absolutely can uh, interact with two-way uh, SMS and um, you know short codes and all that sort of thing. Uh, for the purpose of the hackathon, to keep things simple, it's just a one-way uh, delivery. Cool. Does that answer your question? I guess he's not there. I didn't hear him. But, okay. Uh, Okay, that's great. Um, so all the material has been made available. We, Joel sent out an email today to everybody with, with, with the activities. We'll kick off at 9 a.m. on Monday morning. Uh, we'll go through more details of technology, make sure every team is, is, is set up and running. Um, and I hope you look forward to seeing it, not just as an opportunity to win some cash, which of course is always a good idea, uh, but also really it's, it's, it's an opportunity to learn some technologies which are and design principles, which, which really are, uh, you know, going to enable interconnectivity and the connection of all things across the globe in the coming years. So it'll be an opportunity to learn a, a lot of these principles, which you can take back into your uh, workplace or your college and university and, and new business opportunities in the future. Um, so that's all I have for today. Unless anyone has anything else, I think we can wrap it up there. stuff okay we'll see you all next week and uh, thanks again to our panelists uh, and we'll see you guys on 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 Monday morning as we kick off at 9 a.m take care thank you bye bye, bye.